Hello, and thank you to all of you who have taken the time to tune into this presentation in which we want to give some guidance on how to establish what I would like to call a library in a box. There are a few practical reasons why this can be very helpful for the teaching of Sunday School in the congregation. And I would like to start by naming just a few. Some congregations have limited resources at their disposal and when the time and expense has been taken to make visual aids, one would want to find a way to preserve these so that they can be used again and again. Then, we should remember that there are some Sunday school teachers who, after some years for whatever reason, can no longer continue teaching Sunday school. Many of them have visual aids that would be lost to Sunday school. There are a few practical reasons why this can be very helpful for the teaching of Sunday school in the congregation. And I would like to start by naming just a few. Some congregations have limited resources at their disposal. And when the time and expense has been taken to make visual aids, one would want to find a way to preserve these so that they can be used again and again. Then, we should remember that there are some Sunday school teachers who after some years, for whatever reason, can no longer teach Sunday school. Many of them have visual aids that would be lost to Sunday school if we don't ask them if we could use these visual aids and make them available to new teachers. An added benefit of having a, having a library in a box is that we can reserve a day and then do preparation well in advance, perhaps for the whole term or half a year. With the prepared lesson stored in the box, preparation time before the lesson is cut down to a minimum. So, how do we get started if we want to do this? Well, firstly, it would be good to have a copy of the lesson as it appears in the manual, because this can act as our lesson plan. Now let's start. Now you read through your lesson and you decide which points you'd like to emphasize and what you are going to say with a picture or visual aid. Also decide which images will be most meaningful for the children. As a hint, remember, it is convenient to use pictures that are either in the teacher's manual or in the children's workbook. Let's take a pencil and mark the spot on the copy of the lesson by writing, for example, pick one. So I'm going to do this. This will be my pick one. Oh yeah, I think pick two would be nice. It'd be a dad and a child. This is really good for us to use as the chief apostle with the axe. We'll do pick three. One of the questions the children will answer is pick four. And finally, we will use pick five. Systematically work through the lesson from start to finish and mark each place where you will use a visual aid to help clarify the lesson for the children. Once you have completed this process, you should have a lesson which is marked at given points from start to finish with a pick one, pick two, pick three, until perhaps at the end, pick five. The next step will be to place all the images in order that you can start to fix them to a cardboard backing. Remember, if the picture is in black and white, you can colour it in to make it more eye-catching. So we'll take our picture, we'll cut out our picture. We'll also look for a piece of cardboard that will, be, that will either match the size of the picture or we can cut it out to the size of the picture. As you can see, I've used recycled cardboard. I'll start my cutting. So let's put this aside. And now we'll go onto the tape. It's very, very easy to use. Put a piece of broad tape on a picture. Paste the picture onto the cardboard 
and cover it with your broad tape. As I'm doing right now. Smooth it out. Put it to the back. By doing this and covering the full picture that you pasted on the board, you do not need to spend money on laminating the pictures. Now we'll number the pictures on the back of the board so that you know in which order to use when telling the children the story. Once all the images and pictures that you're going to use have been mounted on the board, it is time to preserve and mark them for filing. One of the easiest and most inexpensive ways of preserving the material is using a plastic sleeve. Firstly, write the lesson number on a title on a piece of cardboard. I've prepared this for us so that, so for example, the lesson says Sunday School 1, Lesson 1.8.4, My Apostle Ministers by Commission of Jesus. So I've covered this with the broad tape once again and then I will attach it to the front of the plastic sleeve. Again we're using the tape, the broad tape, to help preserve our visual aids. Once you've done this, you, take, you can take your boards that you've prepared, your visual aids, you can slide them into the plastic sleeve and you can cover it with a piece of masking tape. We use the masking tape because it's, it's just so much easier to open and close your plastic sleeve. As I've done right here. So when you need to use your visual aids, you open it up and there you have it. The other thing as well is it also prevents the contents from falling out. The completed lesson can now be placed in the cardboard box for safekeeping. In this way, visual aids can be prepared for every lesson of the year and they can then be stored together so that you can have your library in a box. This concept can be taken even further. The Congregation Sunday School Coordinator could ask for the Rector's assistance in finding a secure area or room in the church building. This can then become the Congregation Library. The library in a box for each Sunday School class can then be stored here with the Congregation Coordinator or someone delegated by her managing access to the library. An added benefit to having such a library is that any teaching material that may be donated for Sunday School can be then also be securely stored here. A system can then be put in place where the teacher fetches the lesson for the day as well as the lesson for the next week. The current lesson is then used for the execution of the lesson on that day while the lesson for the following week can be browsed through so the teacher can familiarize herself with what is available. In this way, the preparation for the following week has already started. Of course, it goes without saying that all lessons should be returned to the library for safekeeping as soon as it is no longer needed. And now to end with, let us go and have a look at a congregation where the library in a box concept has been implemented. And then the butler dreamt that he had a vine with three branches. He picked the grapes, he put them in the cup, and in the cup, 
he made some wine. He presented it to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh was very, very happy. What is the last promise that the Lord has promised us, but it has not been fulfilled yet? Here's Logan. That he will come and fetch us. That the Lord will come and fetch us. The Lord promised us that he will return one day. Yes, the Lord promised that he will return one day. Live in a Box started about four years ago. I wanted to do a library for the whole of the congregation, which included every syllabus and every lesson in the syllabus for the whole of the Sunday school. And it wasn't a lot of expenses that you need to have. You can use recyclable material, all boxes that you can cut up, that you can put at the back of a picture. This is a calendar of last year that we used and we pasted on there. This is the picture that we have in our workbook. And there we go. And this is the end result of that picture that we have on the board. It is just enlarged. You can go to the library. You can make copies. You don't need any fancy um, printers or anything. You can make use of any Bible books. A lot of people have Bible books at home. Ask anybody in the congregation. They can contribute. This was contributions that we received. And you can copy these and then you can color in the copy. There's a result of a copy that was colored in. And we also have just the normal colors that we use. We don't even use paint, just the colors. And then you can take those pictures, color pictures, you can copy it. And there we go. We have our pictures. Recyclable material we can use. Any kind of board, any kind of uh, calendars, any kind of papers that you can use. Then we can all paste it on the, on the paper and we can make a picture come alive for the child. This is all about the child seeing the colors and seeing the pictures, being able to read the story of all those pictures that you have on your board. And so we have progressed from library in a box because not all congregations have a lot of space where they can put the boxes in. And now we have progressed to library in a file. If we look at our lesson, Sunday's lesson is maybe lesson number 6.2. And we can take out our lesson out of the file. This lesson is the lesson for Sunday School 2. Lesson number 6.2. Jesus speaks of his return. And there's the name of the lesson. So that lesson doesn't fall out of the plastic sleeve. You just put a piece of tape on it. And this is what the lesson is all about. There is our captions, there is our pictures. These lessons are taken from a storybook. Taken out and written down the story that is, and we put it on a board, and then we have the whole story for the child. The child can then follow the whole story on the board. And this is how the story is in the sleeve, which you can just replace back later and file it back again. And that is how we can put the story on the board for the child. And then when the lesson is done, we can just put it back into the sleeve and then we can just find it again for the next year. Thus far I've made 1,400 lessons across four con five congregations and it's about 7,000 pictures and captures that was done. That was done by one person. Imagine if all congregations have three or four people that can all go together and make the library. It is very rewarding because at the end of the day, it is the child that sees this results. Now that you've seen the library in a box in action, 
I hope it made you excited to start a library in a box for your congregation. Wishing you all the best with your teaching. Goodbye and God bless.